All right, let's talk some New York football giants here. The Giants might not have a ton of talent, but they make up for it by also not having a ton of cap space. Incredible situation they are currently in. Have some draft capital, though. So that's that's where you go from here. And again, are they a bit away? I think they're a bit away. I do. I don't think that this is a team that, like, you know, you look at some of these teams and say, okay, wow, there's a lot of interesting, fun stuff. They could do this free agency period. And then there seems like the Giants where you're like, okay, let's just try and put ourselves in a good situation for the future is the way I view this. That's the way I view it. Uh, and we'll get into exactly why. As always, let's start off with uh, how much cat space they have and who they have to resign. Yeah, so here we go. So negative 12 million in cat space you see at the top. That's not ideal. Uh, you know, they're key free agents, not a ton though. So that's kind of the nice thing. Uh, and you see the number next to them. That's how much Pro Football Focus is projecting they will make in free agency. So uh, Evan Ingram at 9 million, you know, I, I think he probably goes. I think they probably make a move from him. I don't think Ingram is horrible. Like some people make him out to be like, okay, he clearly had, like, did he uh, get overhyped early on in his career? Like, yeah, of course. But I do think there is still some value in having an Evan Ingram who, you know, can run routes. Uh, there's some value in that on your football team. I don't know about the $9 million price tag. Someone will probably overpay. If I'm the Giants, I let someone else make that mistake. That's, that's the way I view it personally. Uh, you also have someone like a Jabril Peppers who, listen, there's very much the debate of for Jabril Peppers, what's what's the deal with a Peppers? Like, like what do you want to do here? Because I think if he's used wrong, he can be an actively not great player. Like we've seen this with guys like Jamal Adams, uh, who have been used incorrectly and have it not really add that much value to a football team. I think there is a way to make a Jabril Peppers valuable. I think for six million dollars, I would keep him, and I think he'll get more than this because part of what makes Part of what I think is like one of the Giants like best things they did in this, you know, horrible situation. And I guess maybe it's different because they have a new GM now. But, uh, you know, Dave Gettleman, one of the best things he did was the Odell Beckham trade. That's kind of like that's his, you know, shining thing. That's you know, He'll put the paper of the newspaper of that on his wall because he nailed that one. And Jabril Peppers was a key part of that. So. Uh, getting Jabril Peppers, I think maybe it'll just keep him just for that alone. Although, again, new regime probably uh, don't care about that as much, I would think. Nate Soldier here, um, not exactly worth, uh, you know, I think, I don't know if you just like throw him away, quite frankly, like 5 million, that's not a bad contract. We got to see Andrew Thomas play really well, which like, that was cool. Like, I, I really liked Andrew Thomas coming out of college and he was so bad his rookie year. Although, in fairness, to pat myself on the back a little bit, I did kind of say, like, I still liked some stuff about Andrew Thomas, but part of that might have been just confirming my priors uh, in his rookie season. But, you know, you got the left tackle down, so maybe you just let Soldier walk because that contract did not work out. You also have edge rusher Lorenzo Carter, who can fine player, $4 million. Uh, you can keep him, you can leave him. It's not the end of the world either way. So if they wanted to re-sign everybody, they would need $24 million, meaning they'd have to clear $35 million to do so. I don't know if they need to re-sign all these guys, but you know, even if you wanted to, you could make that work. Teams spend over $35 million in actual money over the cap all the time. As I keep saying on these videos, remember, 30 teams out of the 32 teams last year spent over the cap in terms of actual money. And on an average year, it tends to be about like five to seven teams that spend under the salary cap on a given year. Uh, so, like, yeah, spend over the cap, that's fine. That's what most teams do. As for players they could cut, uh, you have Blake Martinez, who a lot of Packers fans said, hey, uh, go ahead, have Blake Martinez. And then he actually played really well for the Giants uh, last year. Didn't get on the field much this year uh, due to injury. But, uh, you know, that's someone who you could get rid of if you wanted to to save $9 million. But again, you're losing a quality player if you go out and do that. I also have a couple of receiving options, one being a tight end, one being a wide receiver. First, a receiver, Sterling Shepard. You spent, went out and you spent all these resources on wide receivers in the offseason with Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney, who you drafted. Tony struggled to stay on the field. Kenny Galladay struggled to stay on the field. Uh, you know, Sterling Shepard struggled to stay on the field. So obviously, you know, hopefully you just stay healthy. But maybe you say, Am, you know, we have the depth here. Uh, we have Darius Slayton still on the roster. We, you know, we're okay there. We can we can find that in other ways, which I think would make some sense. Uh, you have like a, a Kyle Rudolph, who, again, 
he's fine if you let him and Evan Ingram walk. You have to get a tight end now, so maybe you just keep Rudolph as the cheaper option, or maybe you sign Ingram and then cut Rudolph, although I think Rudolph's probably the better player, so I probably just, you know, keep Rudolph with the cheaper option. And then, of course, uh, as I always say, if a special teamer is making more than $2 million, they're going to end up on this list of guys you could potentially cut. You're giving Riley Dixon $3 million for to be, uh, you know, not, not even the best of punters, so he's a guy who you could potentially move off of as well if you wanted to. Charts like these are really important to look at where we are at with the Giants. And you look at them, um, they got some improvements they need to make. So what we're looking at is going to be where they ranked in each positional category according to PFF. I know not everyone loves PFF, but I think they tend to be pretty accurate. Uh, and this is where they're at is they not, don't love a ton of what we saw from the Giants. Now, the passing game at 31 there is a bit of an asterisk there, which is it was just so bad once Daniel Jones got hurt. I mean, Jake Fromm and Mike Lennon were atrocious, and part of that was they had no one to throw to, but Daniel Jones was actually 21st ranked, so it's better than 31st, but still not, like, great. But if Daniel Jones can be a solid starter, which I think he has that capability to be, like, there's at least something there, and you're apparently giving him another year, which, given the draft class, I don't actually hate that decision, even though it's getting made fun of a lot, uh, but you just got to improve the other stuff, you know, the offensive line, you have to improve, obviously, you got that left tackle, maybe get a right tackle, and then just kind of, you know, fill in the middle with decent players, that's kind of a strategy teams like to do a lot, although really, I think guard's kind of their biggest position of weakness there, I would say, uh, you also have for, you know, uh, you also have their weaknesses of receiving core, which again, part of that might just be being healthy. They could have that happen. Like same thing with the running game. Okay. Maybe just having Saquon Barkley, like, you know, stay healthy. If that'll ever happen, this is kind of the issue with spending a number two overall pick on a running back, but I'm not the first or last to talk about that as a decision, uh, a better, better off than having Sam Darnold, I suppose. So could, you know, it's not that bad, but still, uh, running defense definitely could use some work. Pass rush could definitely use some work. Coverage was fine. And, you know, again, you improve the front, then maybe the, it allows the coverage to be better. So it all works together. But and it, although PFF doesn't really take that into consideration, but maybe in small ways it could affect it a little. They could definitely use a, like, you know, true, like, number one pass rusher type uh, on the edge because their interior is pretty good. But, you know, and maybe Aziz Ojalare is the guy who, like, steps up and is able to do that. I don't know. Uh, it's interesting though. So yeah, that's where I think the Giants are is they're far away. They're rebuilding and that's kind of why is they have not the most talent. They don't have a ton of cat space. They have a little cat space. You could do something here and there. But uh, and again, like let's let's just try to build the perfect perfect scenario for the Giants. The perfect scenario is uh, Kadarius Tony stays healthy and is awesome like we saw in college. Uh, you have someone like a, uh, you know, Kenny Galladay who kind of returns to Detroit form, who's always been kind of a streaky player. Uh, and he kind of, you know, is that like uh, fringe number one receiver uh, or really good number two receiver. Now your receiving core goes from not great to awesome or at least like good. And then Daniel Jones is that consistent, like solid quarterback. You improve the offensive line to make that consistent. Now you have a good offense that could potentially propel you to a, like, you know, maybe even if you get lucky, a fringe playoff team. That's the dream scenario. And then uh, you get a true edge rusher on top of it and uh, can, you know, can, can make their defense competent as well. Even with all those things, I don't know, like, this is probably like a playoff team and maybe a, a one win playoff team. And that's if they per do everything perfectly, which probably won't happen, right? Are you going to get a true edge rusher, all your receivers to stay healthy and improve an entire offensive line in one offseason when you have little gap space? It's going to be tough, but you can get closer to that, right? You don't have to do all those things in one offseason. You can get halfway there this offseason and get the rest of the halfway the next offseason. So that's that's the real hope for the Giants is you just get closer. And that's what you got to do at this point. Uh, I think it's still still a year away, but, but maybe not much more than a year away if things if they can play their cards right. But that's a big if. So uh, let's see what happens. What do you guys think will happen this offseason? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.